Hi, everybody. It's Joel Wood, your lobbyist here at the Council. We're still fresh off of uh, our Broadmoor Insurance Leadership Forum, uh, 98th year, uh, the most arguably the most uh, important industry meeting in the commercial insurance marketplace uh, in the world, and it was uh, jam-packed, beautiful weather, I think very, very successful meeting. Very, very gratifying for me uh, to know and to see so many hundreds of brokers and insurance company officials in, uh, in a terrible economy and a eight years of a unrelenting soft commercial market with all the anxieties additionally on the healthcare front uh, to see that uh, our members uh, seem to get so much out of that meeting. Uh, it's a busy week for us as well uh, on the healthcare front. Dennis Donahue, our member from uh, Wells Fargo, who uh, was the chairman of our CB board, uh, is testifying before the House Education and Labor Committee on the whole issue of grandfathering for health plans, the whole notion of uh, if you like your health plan, you get to keep it. Uh, and what a crock that is. Uh, I think he will be much more diplomatic than me uh, uh, in explaining that to Congress. Uh, it is uh, a really interesting time. Uh, certainly I heard from our member firms at the Broadmoor as the lobbyist. I think I, I, if I had to take a poll, uh, you would find that uh, among our member firms that Congress is about one point more popular than venereal disease right now. And, um, and so politically, all eyes are turned on the election. What ultimately is going to happen on health care reform, we all know is going to be dependent on the presidential race, whether or not Republicans uh, maintain control of the House and regain control of the Senate. I think that it is likely, I don't know, you know, Mitt Romney, Rick Perry, Herman Cain, who knows what's going to happen on the presidential side. But on the House side, the Republicans should maintain the House. They should retake the Senate just on the basis of the numbers. And uh, if that's the case, there were some important implications for health reform. I've been telling everyone to temper their enthusiasm for outright repeal of Obamacare. I used, used to not use that word because it was considered disparaging, but now I see that the president is using it himself. And so uh, irrespective of the Supreme Court and their decisions, the uh, issue has always been that you got to get to 60 votes in the Senate to do anything substantially. And it's very, very unlikely Republicans would get to 60 votes in the Senate. The most uh, compelling thing that has happened, though, in the last week that may change that dynamic, and may have missed it in the news, is that Harry Reid, the Senate Majority Leader, used a very obscure parliamentary maneuver just a week ago uh, to overturn a decision of the Senate parliamentarian on a, on a simple majority vote as opposed to a 60 uh, filibuster-proof vote. This has great implications for how the Senate has now established precedents going forward. And though some Democrats are saying that it's not really that big of a deal, uh, I think a lot of Republicans are looking at this as the opportunity in a big way if you assume, and that's a big assumption, that there's a major Republican sweep uh, next year. Uh, and so I think for the first time Republicans are be beginning to believe that they have the opportunity to go for, uh, go after some of the central tenets of Obamacare as opposed to just nipping around the edges if they are successful in the next year. We're going to be keeping a big eye on it, working our butts off for you guys, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to see so many of you at the Broadmoor, at the ILF. Thanks.